So I'll just give you a couple moments to settle down. My name's Emily Washings. I'll be giving um, a talk a little bit later, and I'm going to help MC a little bit here. And we have the great honor of having Ken Workman from the Duwamish here to offer opening prayers and thoughts. And I just want to th say thank you again for the Hyundai Ijin. My clinket is in infancy stage, so um, if we could just give the um, dance group a round of applause, Hyundai Jin. <laughs> and as I call Ken up here, I just want to say that this is my first time I've met him and heard his remarks, so I'm ex as excited as you are to hear what he has to say as he welcomes us to this space today. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words and uh, the fantastic drumming and singing that we were just all privileged to. In uh, our local language, Lashutseed, my name is Jayustops. This, uh, my English name is Workman, Ken Workman. So Workman in Lashutseed is Jayus Stops. So Jayustops teeds da at the wabs. I am workman of the Duwamish tribe. And great, 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 great grandson of Chief Seattle. And so I'm asked to come before people in Seattle every now and then to say a word or two, some thoughts. And so I would like to share with you this, that it was just yesterday to the native people that were here that there was nothing but trees and elk and deer and bear and eagle and salmon and the wind blew and we could hear the words in our trees. We could hear those sounds. And so now when we're in this magnificent building and we have all of this glass all around us and we look out behind us, I say, Grandpa, what were you doing? <laughs> and so in our own words, Tatsis Lab Debitsi, it is good to see you, to see ya, 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 my friends. If us could eat a chat, what dog we hate, oh, ya, you, sas, dat. It is good to see you, and thank you for the big work that you do here today. Us is love to be, see, bak, to see ya, 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 da, e, e, a, da, e, shit. And it's good to see all of our relatives and our friends and our, our uh, indigenous people that are all gathered here. And so just 170 years ago or so, my grandfather, he stood right on the shores of Alki, or just about, Duwamish, Duwamish head. And he said something like this. He said, Thlalil, Thlalil de Siyaya Adisha Ohog would have fought the Duwams, which simply means, come ashore, come ashore onto this land of the Duwamish. Because people from all over would come, and they would come in their canoes. And the only thing that we had were trees and hills and streams. And so when people arrived, they were wondering, where am I? You're on the land of the Duwamish. Du means inside, Mish is people. And so you were aware of, of this place. And so we do that today as well. We say gunul chish to our Tlingit friends. Our Tlingit friends from Alaska, when they hear this word, they go, oh, I know this place. These must be good people. And then if you come 300 miles south or so, you run into the Haida who use Hawa. And when they hear their word, they go, oh, this must be a good place, this place called Seattle, the land of the Duwamish. Their neighbors, the Simpson, they use Joichkum. You come another 300 miles south, you run into the New Chinalt, and they use Tleiko. Another 100 miles south of that, you run into the Saanich, and you run into the Lummi, and they use Haiskwa. And so in all of these ways, we have these many languages, so it's important for us to know how to say thank you, that we appreciate all the work that you do, and that you being here, just your presence being here is an honor. And so if you come down south from the Lummi, another 70 miles or so, you run into the Tulalips and they use Tig. 30 miles south, you run into this land, the land of the Suquamish, the Duwamish, the Snoqualmie, the Puyallup, the Muckleshoot, we use Kwe. And our friends on the Columbia River, they use Hayo for Hayo Masi. And so it's important that we say this. 
so that these people, that all people, know that this is a good place. So when Grandpa stood on the shore here just a little while ago and he said, he said something like gui, which means welcome, it means invite. He said, gui gui hedak de siyaya. Welcome, my friend. Gui gui hedak de iiam. Welcome, honored people. Gui gui hedak de iisha. Welcome, all my relatives. Adisha ogura fata yayala duavs. Onto this ancient land of the Duwamish. And so we say that today. So it's my honor, it's my privilege to say to all of you here, just as my grandfather did yesterday. He said, Gwigwihidakti si yaya ya adish o gurafata tawabs. Hoi. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Bufano, and I'm the executive director here. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you into this beautiful place at Chihuly Garden and Glass. It is our mission to embrace the vibrancy of arts in our community. We strive to look for meaningful ways to connect all people with the rich culture of this region. We are proud to be one of the many organizations who will share the story of Edward Curtis through educating and engaging the public. This room is filled with representatives from multiple museums, from the Seattle Public Library, from Native cultural centers, from corporations and foundations. And you've all come together to support and participate in this incredible region-wide initiative beyond the frame. We live in a remarkable community, and we have the power to do remarkable things when we work together and when we collaborate. Beyond the frame is testament to the hard work and the collaboration that everyone in this room has done in our community. Thank you so much for being here today on this very important day, and we look forward to the rest of the year. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, most of you don't know this, but Chihuly is an old Salish word, which means you break it, you buy it. So. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Jaylene Quinto. I'm a member of the Lakes and Entiet Band of the Colville Confederated Tribes. I'm also um, a member of the Raven Clan in the Thunderbird House of the uh, Clinkets of Southeast Alaska. Um, my Indian name is Papumpum. Pum. That, that's it, it's just Papumpum. Pum. Um, it means little hummingbird. I feel like everyone else in my family got a really impressive, kind of hard to pronounce name. And I think my great grandma, Isabel Arqueza, probably looked at me and said, she gets three syllables. She's, that's all she can handle. It's fair. It's totally fair. Um, I'm here today because, um, unfortunately, Daryl Hilaire, who's a former chairman of the Lummi Nation, was unable to join us. Um, he's a noted playwright. He's far more impressive than me, so I apologize. You're getting all the nativeness, but like half the gravitas. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, Daryl Hilaire was not able to join us, but um, he did want to uh, provide a statement um, that I'm going to read to you. While it was my hope to join you at the Beyond the Frame kickoff, the recent passing of Larry Kinley, an important and deeply respected elder in the Lummi community, has required me to be with my people today. I did want to send a few thoughts for you. It is both a right and a responsibility to share the stories of my people. I became involved with Beyond the Frame to be Native for both of these reasons. It opens up space to talk about why Native voices have not always been heard in the past. It's an opportunity to center Native voices and Native stories today and in the future. I look forward to seeing you at Beyond the Frame exhibits and events. I look forward to sharing my story and my people's stories with you. 
so we are missing him today. Um, so I'd like to start off by recognizing all the tribal leaders in attendance today. I know we have the chairman of the Suquamish tribe, Leonard Forsman, is here. Hi, Leonard. Um, uh, but <laughs> Thank you. Will all the representatives from tribes and tribal organizations please show your hands? Where are my natives at? All right, okay, nice. Thank you all for being here. We've got enough for like a decent sized powwow, so stay after. Um, so I'm relatively new to the Beyond the Frame project. Um, I am formerly the director of the Indian Country Practice at Pyramid Communications. Um, today, I'm a full-time snack maker and lead candy negotiator to my nine-year-old son, Henry. Um, I decided I really needed a job that was way harder that didn't pay, so. Um, but I was asked to help out um, with Beyond the Frame in its later stages, and I was really happy to do so, and it's a project that's near and dear to my heart. And I think we're going to now watch a video, which I also got roped into participating in. So. Even today in 2018, we still encounter the people who don't believe that we exist, who have never met us before, who don't know us. And until we get beyond this just cloak of invisibility, we're not going to be real to other people. We're not going to be real to white society, and we're not going to be able to make um, the gains that I think we need to make to keep our families and communities healthy and educated and to protect our lands and our waters. You know, people that come and um, experience this exhibit can walk away feeling like they have had the opportunity to meet a Native person and to understand more about our current realities and to not feel like um, that we're some sort of mystical being that existed in the past. For me, as, as a Navajo, the legacy of Curtis really you know, hits you, hits me, because you know, some of the most iconic images are, are ones of Navajos. What, what's really important, I think, for Natives and for our, our children is that we reframe the discussion ourselves. Nobody has the unique story of any nation, of any tribe, of any country, but the indigenous people of this land, and I am the indigenous people of this land. And looking beyond the frame is a way to tell that story, that we're here, we're ready. We are the protectors of our lands. And the power to tell our stories, to tell our own voice, is um, it, it, it's what will you know, give us the power to once again become prosperous and helping you know, reduce some of the harm that the colonizers have brought to our land. You know, there's anger around some of this work because there's, there was things going on at that time that uh, our country doesn't know about. You know, we need to raise those points, you know, for us to change. I would like non-natives to know that I matter, that my children matter, that my ancestors mattered. If Ed Edward Curtis were here, I would tell him thank you. Thank you for capturing our past. But I would tell you that your vision that we would be a vanishing race, we're still here and we're very much alive. Uh, this is our story. Uh, be part of us, uh, walk with us, walk next to us, walk behind us, but be part of our world that's been so much uh, part of us through our bloodlines. So Edward S. Curtis was a storyteller whose images evoke a certain nostalgia. And for many Americans, his photographs were the first time they'd ever seen the face of a Native person. Um, and as a former photographer, I, I actually think they're pretty beautiful and powerful in their own way, but there was a flip side to his work that few Americans knew about, where he showed a stoic Indian, there lived a native man or woman 
living under American policies designed to assimilate or exterminate them. So for me, his imagery and his recordings began an important story, but it wasn't the full story and it wasn't always a true story. Native peoples, like everyone, are fully formed humans. Sure, there are a few of us who are stoic. My, my brother plays a big game sometimes. <laughs> and, um, but just as many of us are weird and quirky and emotional and shy and proud, we practice our old ways, we fish, we gather roots and berries, we are learning our language and reclaiming our language, but we also binge watch Netflix and we're just like you and cannot believe that Game of Thrones is not coming back till next year. Um, Beyond the Frame is an opportunity to, to step outside of the photograph and inside the real lives of native peoples. The people who know what it is to be native, who know what it is to be a survivor, who know what it is to be misunderstood because we've been painted both in history in Curtis's photos and today in mascots and popular culture with a, one generic brush, brush stroke. More than anything, I believe there's power in native peoples telling our own stories. I believe our stories are sacred. For me, I believe this is the power of Beyond the Frame. So, this great project was made possible only through um, a number of organizations and the dedication of a lot of people. And I'm just going to um, recognize them now. For Culture, Boeing, Hugh and Jane Ferguson Foundation, the Kongsgard Goldman Foundation, the Seattle Public Library Foundation, Snoqualmie Tribe, Walker Family Foundation, Washington Indian Gaming Association, Starbucks, Chihuly Garden and Glass, Wyman Youth Trust, Icicle Fund, Museum of History and Industry, Seattle Art Museum, Children of the Setting Sun Productions, Seattle Foundation, Potlatch Fund, Pyramid Communications, Tatouche Media, and Visit Seattle. So let's give a round of applause to everyone who made that possible. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Marcellus Turner. Marcellus is the executive director and chief librarian of the Seattle Public Library, and he'll be collecting your library fines after this, so. I must say that that is a very tough act to follow. Um, I am Marcellus Turner, I am your city librarian, and I am so happy to be with you this morning. In September 2015, the library hosted a general meeting for all regional cultural institutions, scholars, educators, and members of the public to explore what a sesquicentennial celebration of the Edward S. Curtis might include. If you attended that meeting, or if you attended any of the subsequent meetings, or are now planning a program, exhibit, or other event for Beyond the Frame to be Native, please raise your hand. Gosh, a full room. Thank you so much for doing that. Edward S. Curtis was born 150 years ago today, and as we reflect upon his monumental work, The North American Indian, this 30-year journey to photograph, document, and record the culture and life of over 80 Native American and First Nations tribes, we understand that against so many hardships, injustices, and broken promises, Native people have survived and indeed thrived. Curtis secured initial financial backing from J.P. Morgan, but when that ended, he used his own money and ultimately ruined his health to complete the project. It's amazing the backstories they give you when you're reading your document. And while the images are striking in their presence, they do not tell the whole story. Indeed, they portray indigenous people in a romanticized way. At that first general meeting, our regional cultural leaders identified some very important concepts and themes that would begin to lead this project to Beyond the Frame to be Native. 
where the Curtis image would be one of many perspectives. Bringing the Native voice into the center of this community conversation has been vital to the library and, we think, needed by the general public. The library supports engagement and the building of community by providing access and support for all types of information, learning, and civic discourse. Beyond the Frame gives our regional community the platform from which to explore complex histories, read personal narratives, reevaluate the history, and listen to our Native colleagues. Each of the programs, exhibits, events, workshops, and other activities will present a perspective, and we invite you all to attend and visit as many of these as you can during the year. The experiences you will have, the new people you will meet, and new places you will visit will be all a part of a renewed sense of community. Projects like this happen with important and thoughtful support. Beyond the Frame is a community-wide collaboration administered under the fiscal sponsorship of Seattle Foundation. As our local community foundation and longtime partner at the library, we're delighted to have worked with Tony Mestres and his wonderful team to advance with this ambitious project. We are honored to have the support of J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, who stepped up as the presenting sponsor for this campaign. Special thanks to Phyllis Campbell and her local team for their partnership. Some of you may know that J.P. Morgan himself was Edward Curtis's initial benefactor and invested in the idea of the North American Indian Project. In 1906, Morgan agreed to sponsor Curtis to acquire the necessary equipment and hire interpreters and researchers. We are also very grateful for the financial support of many community partners, individuals, businesses, and foundations who have joined us in this effort. And I know that there is signage somewhere that lists all of our supporters, so be sure to look for that. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Seattle City's Deputy Mayor Mosley. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Marsalis. I first want to acknowledge and recognize that we are on the lands of the Coast Salish people. We are honored to be here. And I think I am correct in saying that the city of Seattle is the only city in the country named after a native leader, Chief Seattle, who is a Suquamish and Duwamish chief. And we're privileged to be here. Mayor Durkin sends her uh, apologies for not being able to be here today, but uh, I come on behalf of Mayor Durkin and in support of and recognition of this wonderful project. Beyond the Frame is taking place at an important time in our nation and in our city for except for the native people here, all the rest of us are immigrants. Mayor Durkin and her administration is committed to supporting the important conversations that will take place this year around Native American identity, race and resilience, art and culture. We recognize the work that, all, that we all need to do to better understand the history of this region and the impact of Native people on this place that we call home. One of the things that I learned in a previous position when I was the director of Washington State Ferries is that where our Muckleteo Terminal, which many of you I'm sure have used, is located is actually at the site, the area where the Treaty of 1855 was signed, which recognized the sovereignty of the native, native people. It's that those kinds of facts about our region that we need uh, to learn more about 
and to recognize. I also want to recognize those organizations that are important partners of ours, that do tre have tremendous impact on the city of Seattle. The Chief Seattle Club, the Seattle Indian Health Board, Daybreak Star, the Potlatch Fund, just to name a few. And while we celebrate the resilience and strength of Native people, we also recognize that Native Americans face great disparities across our, the people of our country, sometimes the greatest of any population. Homelessness, chemical dependency, and displacements are issues that must be addressed by our city, our state, and our country. Beyond the frame is an opening for that. It's not chance. It's not just, it's not a, it's a chance to not just talk about the history that Curtis photographed, but it is also a chance to talk about today. Because as everyone involved in Beyond the Frame knows, Native people are not bound away in photographs. They're our neighbors, our co-workers, the people we sit next to on the bus, the people in our library. And by the way, if you haven't read Seattleites Timothy Egan's book about uh, Edward Curtis, Short Nights of the Shadow Catcher. I highly recommend it to you, particularly, I think, for those who are interested in his work. Native people are people of cultures and nations who help make this region the unique place that is it, it is. And I commend everyone for taking this on and know that Mayor Durkin, and the city will support these conversations in every possible way we can. Thank you. So I forgot to say a special thanks to um, the presenting sponsor, J.P. Morgan Chase, and I'm very sorry. I. I have a Chase visa, so it's not like it's personal. Um, they did provide a statement and wanted us uh, to share that with you. On behalf of our team at J.P. Morgan Chase, we're proud to support Beyond the Frame and to celebrate Native cultures and their significant contributions to life in the Pacific Northwest. So thank you to J.P. Morgan Chase. Good morning. It is a great honor to be here with you today. And I introduce myself in our traditional Ichiskin language, uh, Yakima language. I'm also Skokomish and Cree. And uh, the rough translation of that is that we are taught to recognize ourselves, the land, and the people. And I really want to let Ken know that I took his words and his message to heart today. I think it's extremely important to recognize the Duwamish and to hear from the direct descendant of the leader. And also to kind of echo his message of what does it mean traditionally to have a network? And he described that by illustrating all the different ways to say thank you in different languages. And that it, it's proof of the network that existed where we stand today. And that also can be carried on through us, either as visitors, or as non-natives or as natives. We can continue this network just by being here today and continue with these events. When I, 
was thinking about what I would say to all the fancy people here. <laughs> I looked at the list. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, those look like fancy people. I've never been in the room with some of those fancy uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, people. But um, I, I really thought about the aspect and the idea of going someplace new for non-natives. And for me, I think about being a native all the time. You know, I have three kids under eight. I think about cultural identity and what it means for them. Um, they also have grandparents that live in Mississippi, so they're not just purely just natives. They <laughs> have non-native blood as well. And I thought to a story about how I was really excited we were going to a wedding and the groom was gonna wear a kilt. And I had never been to a wedding where a groom wore a kilt before. I'd never seen that aspect of that. And the kids were dragging their feet. They didn't know who this coworker was. And I had told my six-year-old and my eight-year-old, I was like, we're gonna to go to a wedding where the, the groom's wearing a kilt, like a skirt. And in our culture, our children are our teachers. You saw that with the dancers earlier, when they had them lead part of that song. Uh, in our language, our word for grandparent is interchangeable with grandchild, but only to themselves. So growing up, I would call my dad's mother, Ella, and she would call me Ella. And that was only interchangeable amongst each other. And so we learned at a young age, I get to have and hold that same title that this powerhouse leader, food gatherer has. That is the traditional role of our children in a lot of our communities. And I have to remember that at a lot of key times when they put me in my place. <laughs> so I'm excited about this kilt and she and I was like he's gonna wear like a skirt it's kind of like a skirt you know but it's their traditional version of their regalia it's, and she looked at me and she's like mom natives wore skirts too the guys did <laughs> and I my mind was blank I was like well what do you mean you know I'm looking at my six-year-old trying to get her to explain what she's talking about and she's like you know they had the like cut out their little squares in the front and the back <laughs> <laughs> and she was talking again about her breech cloth. And I thought, oh yeah, they, she is, so. <laughs> um, you know, but they're very observant. And they take things, and they are able to make those connections. And youth teach us that. And I think at a lot of these events and a lot of these things, we, we, you need to know that we have, they're family oriented. A lot of them are family oriented. And that's something that you can bring your children with and be open to them having them teach you. So to me, beyond the frame, to me native is about connection. Uh, it's also about believing, believing the voice of the people that are the descendants in the photos, that are the descendants, our current tribal members here, by attending these events, by going to the website, by sharing a social media post, you're validating that story and that voice to the people, your neighbors, the people in your family, the people around your table. And for me, um, this is my ancestor, Chief Maninik. And he was a treaty signer for the Yakima people. There was 14 treaty signers in 1855. You heard a previous speaker mention the treaties. And I could only imagine what he might have foretold that his great, 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 great granddaughter would be standing before these people, these other leaders, dignitaries. And when he made that decision to mark his name on that paper, at a very young age, I was learning about native policy. One of my earliest memories is sitting at a ceremonial table and hearing the oral history of why he chose to sign the treaty. And again and again and again, it was told that the reason why they signed the treaty is to protect the resources for those not yet born. 
And as we heard that message, we would take in water. We would take the salmon, the deer, the roots, and the berries. And we would hear that message. And as a child, as a young child, they would say, and now it's your responsibility to protect the resources for those not yet born. You must speak for the resources that do not have a voice. And this is something that they shared, and we especially shared in oral history. But there are moments in our history that aren't all glamorous, right? There are moments, you heard the dancers before talk about the copper and their ceremonies. Those were outlawed. We were in hiding with a lot of our ceremonies. To survive meant to hide. To survive meant to be silent. And at one point in his life, he was in hiding because Governor Stevens wanted to renegotiate a different treaty. So there's a lot of different emotions and things in history that will come up. A lot of these exhibits and the people, they hold this. And as you heard the message from the others before, we are here to help you answer those questions. We are here to be that vessel of knowledge and support. I, I personally believe in these opportunities to connect at the different events. Um, one of the projects that I do, just in my own spare time, uh, <laughs> involves searching for the descendants of the war. We had a war for four years in Yakima. I was searching for military descendants on the other side. And I found a, a good several of them. Because I said, the power of that story now is standing side by side historic enemies and saying, we want to share this story and this message together. This is a story in history that needs to be told. And in the same way, we need the natives, the non-natives, to validate and help us tell these stories of the people. And on this 150th anniversary of Edward, or his birthday, a lot of the natives have 150 things to share with you today. <laughs> and when you come in and you, uh, you help them, that'll actually become part of your story too. We have so many stories of allies and people that helped of the Hudson Bay Company that went to jail to protect some of our leaders, judges that got off of their sickbed like near pneumonia to help the militia and the natives to block Governor Stevens. These, aren't, these stories aren't told and shared about people that were supporting and standing side by side. And the power of us today with our social media and our fancy computers is to share that message and to share that story and to tell that. Um, so those are the three things, connection, believing and validating, and opportunities to connect and share. And they aren't all serious. I know that I gave you kind of some serious things today. Uh, <laughs> um, and so I am proud to announce that the Yakima Nation Museum will have an exhibit uh, at our home. And we're continually adding different people that are looking to support different events. Uh, and I definitely wanted to highlight just some of the events and initiatives taking place today. Of course, the website is called Beyond the Frame, and you'll find a lot of different information about the exhibits, the dates, the partners. We'll also have videos. Uh, you saw an earlier one um, that was posted. We'll have different topics on issues of land, housing, policy, um, I like to talk about policy a lot. That's what I got my master's and bachelor's degrees in. And I can think up 10 different things. And I'll put them on Pinterest, with 10 different images. And uh, like the most popular Native American images on Pinterest right now is Edward Curtis. And so I thought, maybe it'll be this policy. And I had told the group earlier when we were working together, my most popular pin is called Native American hair. And it's literally <laughs> a picture of the back of my hair all curled. <laughs> so kudos to my stylist that uses a clear glaze because apparently <laughs> that's where it's at. So um, I try to be mindful of that. <laughs> and why 
and what people want to know and the elements that they really want to hear, which is why when in the tagline to be native and be on the frame, it's very cyclical. It's a cycle. To be native, be on the frame, be on the frame to be native. And there's a beauty in that because it means different things whether or not you're a native or a non-native and your involvement in that cycle is powerful. Uh, so with that, that's kind of the message that we have with joining corporations, tribes, and nonprofits. I have a really funny story about Starbucks, um, and they're actually in my, my beaded bag right now. But <laughs> um, I don't know if other Native families do this, but my uncles and aunts will get a gift for me for Christmas or my birthday, and they won't give it to me right away. They'll drive around with it in their car until they see me. They won't even come to my birthday, you know? <laughs> And so I was at our Safeway grocery store. I had just gotten a Starbucks. And my uncle comes in, and he's coming from the river, and he's like, I got something for you. And he hands me this traditional knife that's all made. He calls it an art of fake. <laughs> because he makes it with all the traditional tools and the, the binding, just how you would have traditionally. But it, you know, obviously, it's made contemporary. And so he just hands it to me, a knife in Safeway, and I'm like, I have no place to put this. I have little kids. And so I just grabbed the, uh, the coffee holder. So I don't know if this is what Starbucks team was thinking of when they made my <laughs> the coffee holder, but it holds my knife. <laughs> and here is the, the very sharp knife, which I use to open everything. And my husband, who's an archeologist, loves to just pull it out at dinners like this and just open something, just to really trip people out. Um, <laughs> but a lot of our stories and engagement and gift is not all very serious. Sometimes it's very just, here you go, and you just figure out how to make things. So whether or not Starbucks knows it or not, we've been in partnership for a little while now. <laughs> <laughs> If you really want to be a part of this growing group of Starbucks, J.P. Morgan Chase, the Arts Fund, the Nordic Heritage Museum, Snoqualmie Tribe, the other tribal groups, um, we invite you to do that. It really is important to have that message and that word get out. Uh, one of the ways is to get a postcard we have located in the back, uh, which, you know, to hold something in your hand, it, it gives it gives a little bit more dimension to it. We live in a very technical world. My parents still don't have a computer, you know, in their home. They collect paper on everything. Um, and I, I really view, uh, believe in the value of holding something in your hand. So please join with us in growing this list of Beyond the Frame sponsors and supporters and attendees. I wanna leave you today with a performance by Git Han. It means people of the salmon, and they are all ready. I don't know. We're going to make up a high sign right now. Yep, we're all ready. Get on, people of the salmon.
Thank you.